Are you looking to get into your very first craft show, but you have no idea how to actually apply? Well, you're in the right place because in this video, I'm gonna share with you my four steps into applying to your very first market. Hey, hey, hey makers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cameron. I run a crochet boutique called Cameron's Cute Creations, but here on YouTube, I love helping fellow crochet business owners take that next step in their business and start making some serious money selling at craft shows. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe down below because I post a brand new video every single Friday. I promise if you follow my steps, you're gonna have a a way better chance into getting into your next craft show. And be sure to wait till the end because I have a bonus of what not to do when applying to craft shows, which is gonna save you a whole lot of time in the application process. Step one, super obvious, but you need to find a market to apply to. Take into consideration if your target audience is gonna be there, how much traffic it's gonna have, and also where the location of the market is. But if you want some more tips on how to find the perfect market in your area, be sure to check out last week's video because I go over all of it in that video. So you might want to watch that first, then come back to this video and we'll get into step two. Step two is find the application for the market you're applying for. Applying to a market is very similar to applying to a job. You have to fill out a page, send it in, and you'll either get accepted or not to this market, just like you would a job application. So first you'll want to check out the event website and see if there's a part of the website where you can apply to. Usually there'll be a vendor section or a apply here section. And if you can't find the application on their website, be sure to just contact the event coordinator and ask if you can have an application for that upcoming event. Step three is to gather all of the required information. Just like a job application, a lot of these market applications will ask for specific things about you and your business. I'm gonna list out some of these things that you might want to get together before you start applying to some markets. That way you have all the information together. You can just stick it in a Word document. That way you can refer back to it for every future market that you apply to. First piece of information they're probably gonna ask for is just your general business information. They're gonna wanna know your name, your business name, address, your phone number, and your email. Super easy so far, right? Next, they'll ask for your general product details. So they wanna know what you're planning on selling at their market. Some good details to go over are certain materials you like to use, price ranges you typically sell at, and just a general brief description of the work that you're going to sell. Next, they might ask you if you have any specific booth needs. At some markets, you can rent a chair or a table for an extra fee. Also, some markets will provide you with an outlet for electricity if you need that as well. Usually for an additional fee as well. Next thing they'll probably ask you, similar to a job application, is what is your experience selling at markets? And don't freak out, if this is your first show, don't worry, just be honest. A lot of shows will still let you in, even if it's your first show. Going along with that last bit they might ask you, they actually might ask for pictures of shows you've done before of your displays. Here's a tip for you, if this is your first show you're applying to and you have literally no pictures of shows you've done because you've never done a show before, do a practice setup in your backyard, in your living room, wherever you have the space and take photos of your practice setup. That way they'll get a better idea of what your display is gonna look like. Even though you don't have the experience of doing one before, they'll take into account that you have really good photos and a really good display anyway. And I always say it's a good idea before your show anyways to do a practice setup, just to time yourself to see how long it takes. So you might as well do one anyways to practice and then snap some photos of it for future market applications. The next thing they might ask for is insurance. Now, not every market requires you to have business insurance, but it's a good idea to have anyways. Usually the bigger the show, the more like likely they are to require insurance. So be sure to look into getting business insurance if you don't already to apply to more shows. Again, not everyone requires it, but a lot of them do, so it's totally worth looking into. The next part of the application to look out for is the payment details. They'll usually be clear on payment deadlines and how much you owe at what time. So be sure to read this because this is really important. They'll usually go over what the fee is of the market. And at this point, you can decide, is it gonna be worth it? Or maybe should I try applying to another show? Another thing they may ask on your application, but isn't as common is, what are your sales goals or what do you usually make at markets like this? They're seeing if your stuff is desirable. And again, always just be honest. If you haven't done one before, just say, what you sell online typically. But again, they usually don't ask this question, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. That is all the things they may ask for. So I just recommend putting all of this information in a Word document so you can copy and paste over from it to different markets. That way it saves you a lot of time. You don't have to write up a description of your business every two seconds when you're applying to markets. Step number four is to submit your application and wait 
for a response. Like I promised at the beginning of this video, I have some bonus tips of what not to do when you apply to a market. So before we get to those, I just wanted to mention something that I have coming up because if you've watched this far in this video, you're probably really interested in setting up at a craft show. And in order to set up at a craft show, you need an inventory. You can't really get around it. You need to build an inventory. This seems to be one of the hardest parts for us crocheters. Since crocheting is known to take such a long time, we have so much stuff to make and so little time to make stuff. So I wanna invite you, my crochet friend, to a market prep challenge that I'm hosting. You can sign up for free in the description box down below. It starts on March 20th. But by the way, if you're watching this way in the future, you can still access the challenge information and go through the challenge. You're just not gonna be going on the live date when we have like a ton of people here is what not to do. Number one is do not lie. We already went through this a couple times. If this is your first market, do not lie on your application and say you've done a ton of them before. Here's the thing. A lot of vendors and a lot of event coordinators do a lot of community work together, do a lot of collaborating, and a lot of them know each other. So if you start throwing out dates and times you've been at different markets and you actually weren't there, Mm, people talk, people know, and sometimes they do reach out to these places you've done them for. It's like a referral on a job application. They might tell a bunch of other coordinators, this girl lies on her applications, do not let her in your show. So as always, honesty is the best policy. The second do not is do not skip the fine print. I applied for a market and after being sick or something, wasn't able to attend, went to go ask for my money back and I went back to the application and it was like no returns. And I was like, oh shoot, I did not read that when I applied for this market and I will say a lot of them won't give you your money back if you miss the market so if it's not worth the risk of the fee or you don't have a backup plan maybe a friend that could set up for you if you end up having an emergency or getting sick you probably shouldn't sign up for it unless you're willing to take that amount of risk for me if it's a $50 show yeah that would really stink if I missed it but hey not the end of the world. Things happen in business. I get sick sometimes. A business license or business insurance. And if you don't have these and say you do or forgot to read the fine print and you show up to the market and they're asking you, hey, where's your business license? And you're like, legally you need a business license or at least a temporary business license in order to sell at these markets. And if they catch you without one, they're probably not going to let you set up there. And it's not them trying to be mean or anything. It's just legally they have to do certain things in order to run an event. And sometimes they will check, sometimes they don't. But if it specifies that you need it on there, you need it. You can't go around not having it. You should either have it easily accessible on your phone or printed with you at all times when you do markets. I just keep my business license and insurance printed in a folder and I take that with me to every market. I have been getting a ton of questions about legal stuff and where to get a business license, where to get business insurance, what type of license do I need to set up at shows? Details are different depending on where you live, but if you do want a general video on this, be sure to comment down below and let me know and I can definitely work on a video like that for you. Now this do not is not really when you're applying, but it's more after you hit the submit button and it's do not get discouraged if you end up not getting into the market. I literally do this full time. I literally sell at craft shows and make a living off of it. And there are certain shows that I'll apply for and still not get into. There could be a ton of reasons why I didn't get into that one show I was really interested in doing. And honestly, sometimes it's just the coordinator doing a good job. Maybe they already have a similar crochet business owner setting up at that market and they don't want direct competition at this market. Usually my problem is I'm applying too late and they're like, hey, we are already done. We already chose our people this year. So they usually say we're already booked up. You need to apply next year earlier. And that actually reminds me, I'm launching a market prep planner later this month. And there's a page in there that actually helps you track markets and when to apply for them each year. And that way you're never applying to them too late. But anyways, I just wanted to be transparent. I wanted to be honest with you. I still don't get into every single show I apply for, but I apply for a lot of shows and I do get into most of them by using the tips that I just shared with you. If you don't get into your market, it's probably nothing to do with you. Sometimes they are looking for somebody with more experience as well. I know when I was first starting, it was a little bit harder to get into the bigger shows, but when I had some experience and some photos from different events that I could show them, I ended up getting into markets a little bit easier. But don't get discouraged. There's still a ton of opportunity and a ton of places that will accept you, even if it's your first market. But I encourage you to apply to a market this week and 
whatever market you're interested in applying for, let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to keep me updated if you got into your market or not over on Instagram. I love chatting with you over there. And as always, I wanna thank you so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And if you wanna keep hanging out, I would love to see you in this video right here. So I will see you in this video right here. Bye.